Didn't you find it a little weird that Dallas looked significantly faster in game three than they did in games one and two when it looked like Edmonton was clearly out skating them? It's almost like something happened, like they took a player and reintroduced him into the lineup, and then that player allowed all the other players to slot into their original positions, and then all of a sudden, guys like the scam star Jason Robertson, who I've been telling you about all year, were able to score for the first time in, I don't know, over two rounds of the playoffs. It's almost like one guy came in, and then the whole team clicked into form, and they were able to score four goals again. Oh, that's right. It's return of the Rupe. Return of the Rupe. Hey, what can I say? I'm a fan, but I've seen it for years. Last postseason, when Robertson was just skating around, it was Rupe who was dominating. And you saw how critical and crucial he is to this lineup. Because if you want the production out of Robertson, they even showed a stat. Even during the season, any games that Rupe missed, Robertson scored a grand total of zero goals. If you want any production from the scam star, you need the unappreciated star. Like many of the Barkovs out there, Hints is one of those. And you see what he opens up for the rest of the team. You had a four-goal performance, five with the empty netter, and you had a game three Dallas victory and as good as most of them look don't include Pavelski with the bunch he was still held pointless and I was happy to see throughout the course of that game that right sniff prediction about Nugent Hopkins getting that semi demotion he stayed off the score sheet while Hyman and McDavid were all over the score sheet nothing for Nugent Hopkins so that was great my boy stank registered an assist and that was everything that I wanted to see out of Dallas who you guys know I took for the series and as I told Josh my whole playoffs are riding on that Dallas over Edmonton Western Conference final exacta which I'm feeling beyond thrilled about because that team that I saw last night Edmonton's just not beating a bunch of times maybe they had a chance minus Rupe I just don't think it's in the cars especially you know they got up to a quick 2 nothing lead you can't win that game that's big trouble, and kudos to Dallas, man. This is Colorado went 3-0 and on the road. Vegas went 2-1 and on the road, now 1-0 and in Edmonton. That's not easy to do. I mean, that's pretty ridiculous, so that's very impressive coming from Colorado. And now we're on, after we dealt with the Western Conference scam, now we're going right on to that Eastern Conference scam. The New York Rangers looking to take a 3-1 lead against the Florida Panthers. How is it going to happen? Spin that wheel of fortune, but is it going to be uh, Bobrowski's off and Shesterkin's on while one goes in off a skate? This is Who the hell knows? But in this game, I'm going to look at a couple different streaks that have been going on. The first thing I'll start with is Artemi Panarin. Y you can't be listing a guy at one and a half points in this series. Yes, we had that big blow-up game last game. Eh, afternoon game, holiday weekend, weird game. Don't forget how the first two games of this series look. You should be getting a desperate version of Florida. I mean, Florida cannot dominate a game any more than they did the other night. And them listing Panarin at one and a half. I talked about his shots on goal last time. He hasn't eclipsed three and a half shots this entire series, nor has he eclipsed his over one and a half points in any game. And I think I'm going to have to take the under one and a half for Artemi Panarin in this game. And I'm going to take that. I'm going to put it with the over two and a half goals for the Florida Panthers. That will give you a plus 110. But the way these scam Rangers are, who knows the next scam they're going to pull out of their ass? Who knows? All the scams so far in the playoffs have eventually met their maker. Yeah, let it play out long enough. We're going to see because these Rangers really are a funny one. They're up two to one in this series. It's just like I feel like they're going to get dominated. Somehow you're going to look up and it's going to be 2-2 with eight minutes left in the third. But I'm going to go under one and a half points for Artemi Panarin and over two and a half goals for the Florida Panthers. That's my backdoor way of kind of saying, I think the Panthers should win, but the way it's going with the Rangers, you never know. They say team of destiny. I don't buy in to any of that stuff. Either you get it or you don't. Florida was a team of destiny. Oh yeah, they came back from 3-1 against the best record of all time. And then they beat the Leafs and swept the Canes just to get destroyed by a random Vegas team who has a random fan base. I don't really believe in any of that. 
But anyway, I do think Florida should win this game and tie this series up. As far as player props within that game, I mentioned Panarin. He stayed under his one and a half with the points, under three and a half with the shots on goal. There are two other players. Number one, Gustav Forsling. I think he's on a seven or eight game streak of going over one and a half shots on goal. Also, he was the guy who tied the game in the third period, came right in from the point off the faceoff, scored a goal. So he's obviously playing with a good amount of confidence. I believe he scored the game winner in game six, which eliminated the Bruins. So Gustav Forsling over one and a half shots on goal. That's been running hot. And then the under one and a half shots on goal for Jacob Truba. I keep bringing it up as just a little sprinkle toss in. I've been riding it, and now they're starting to change the price a little. They're making it a little worse. It's been like minus 110, minus 115. But now I guess they're jacking it up. And who knows? He might get thrown out of this game (laughs) the way things are going with this series and, you know, him throwing those people's elbows out there. So under one and a half shots on goal for Jacob Truba. And there's a player who he's just bad. You know, in these series, I've been happy to tell you. Are you watching this guy? He's awful. Pavelski's been one. And another that I pointed out earlier against the Lightning, and now I'm going to point it out once again because I'm not the only one who noticed. The Panthers staff also seemed to notice because he got benched for a portion of the third period, and it was that exact portion of the game where the Florida Panthers were able to score two quick ones in tie. That's Vladimir Tarasenko. Clearly looks like the worst Panther. He just looks like he doesn't have it. And they moved him off that top line. The interesting thing to see for me are they going to go to those lines that were working which was Verhage up with Barkov and Reinhardt and then the second line was Bennett Kachuk and Rodriguez and that line seemed to look good these are all things that I'm going to be looking at half hour before game time the same exact time that we knew that Rupe Hintz was playing as soon as I saw that Hintz was in I fired out parlays to the people on the Patreon because there were trickle-down snakeonomics based off that. Think about if you took Hinson Robertson. Think about if you took Stankoven and Johnston. There were different combos that were available that all fall into place once you know the line combos, and it's going to be the same thing tomorrow. I'm going to be looking at the top six of the Panthers. If Tarasenko's off, I am slamming the under half of a point, but they've already shown they're willing to send him down. So this is kind of the same type of thing with Nugent Hopkins, although Nugent Hopkins gave us a great price. We're just going to get an okay price for Vlad Tarasenko. I'm going to take the under half of a point there. Three players on the Panthers. I said this on the Patreon over the weekend before the last game. I'm going to repeat the same thing. The three guys on the Panthers who have three and a half shots on goal total. I'll pretty much guarantee you two of the three are going over. All three are plus money, so you can take what you want from that. The Panthers should be peppering Shesterkin in this game. And then lastly, on Bet Rivers slash Bally Bet, they still list Kako Capo. And what did I say Kako Capo? Capo Kako. Well, look, I forgot his name. Even the Rangers fans don't even remember his name. They said it's done for him, but he came back and did a grand total of nothing. He had no points in that game, but he had a big stick lift, they say. He can lift as many sticks as he wants as long as he doesn't find himself on the score sheet. What I've been doing with him is because they don't let you do same game parlays like that on Ballybet Bet Rivers. I take his under and I'm going to go back to the Nugent Hopkins under two and a half shots on goal for next game. That's what you have to do if you want to parlay on Bet Rivers or Ballybet with player props. You got you to use two games. So that's what I've been doing to get the best of those prices. That's what I have for you here on a Tuesday. Good luck to you. Better luck to me. I'll look to continue this that was a a much needed great night but i will tell you this over the weekend and then coming into here i'm on a three-day very solid streak we know how my streaks go on here you guys have been here for years now it gets flaming hot and then you know sometimes i hit that draft king's cold i'm sick i'm sick are we on the upswing for something big i guess we'll find out tonight but good luck to you. Better luck to me. Maybe I'll see you over there on the Patreon. We're starting the baseball show next week. Been working on graphics. Been working on some music that I've been getting. How about this music? You hear this? How fantastic is that? And a big thank you to the guy I had make this for me. I'm going to put his link down below. You should check his music out. I found his stuff when I was looking for retro WWF themes. And he makes some filthy ones. 
And I, I'm always happy to help out other people who do the stuff that they enjoy the same way. I'm asking you guys to support me because I'm making some stuff that you enjoy. So if you like music, like the tracks you hear, it's a Blades of Steel remix that you're hearing right now. Go check out some of his stuff. I believe his name is Josh as well. Josh Ines. Ines, Ines, I don't know what the hell. I have to ask how to pronounce his name, but he's got some good stuff. Definitely check it out. I'll see you tomorrow. Some more sniffs. 